But what I wanted to do with this one uh, is quickly show you uh, the library component uh, because this is insanely, insanely, insanely cool stuff. So let me actually get here. Let me share my screen. So um, I'm running a uh, 1.8 uh, release candidate uh, second version, so to say. Uh, this is BR1. Uh, it's our, just our internal code names. And so um, it's, it's basically a release candidate uh, two because BR0 is the first one. And then we always find something and then we uh, follow up on things. But what I've done here, uh, this is actually, this is the web part solution. So let me change to the library solution, or actually let me show this one in here. So if I create a quickly uh, a library component uh, uh, folder, and I can go to the library folder, and I can do yo Microsoft uh, SharePoint, and if I do plus beta, uh, we get the typical set of uh, questions, obviously. Let me slightly pump up the font uh, so you can more easily see what I'm actually doing here. And Yeoman, there we go. So this is going to be called library. That's fine, SharePoint only. This is current folder. And the next question is, well, obviously the deployment mechanisms, no uh, API permissions, but voila, what is the type of client side component which you can create? And we have a new fellow available. So you're able to basically then execute, uh, or when you execute the Yeoman generator in the plus beta mode, uh, you'll get the library uh, component type available in here. And then you can create the uh, library component type, and I'll show you how the library component type actually looks like, if I can find the right, there we go. So this one is a, a library component type, uh, super, super simple uh, library component. Uh, it's a component type of library, and let me again bump up the, the font slightly, so you can actually see what I'm uh, doing here. So component type is library and uh, a few manifest, uh, anim manifest things for that one, nothing major, but I can actually concentrate on implementing reusable components or reusable code. Uh, in this case, this is just the library test library. It has a name uh, 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 property, which will then uh, return this information is coming from a custom library at a certain time. So really simple thing just to verify that things are actually working. Now, <clears throat> after I implemented the library or when I have the baseline uh, done, uh, you'll need to do npm link. Uh, and that means that you're able to then link this uh, library and, and you're able uh, locally and you're able to use the library in uh, web parts. So, but in this case, I've actually already done that. The only thing what I actually want to do quickly uh, is let me get in here. Uh, da -da -da -da. So let's see what do we actually have. Uh, VP, oh, sorry, library. Oh, uh, test no beta. So let me do a call bundle. Uh, does that ship? Um, and I'll do a quickly package solution as well, and we'll get this one deployed uh, basically to the uh, app catalog. This, the demo doesn't make take too long, but I wanted to actually go through the steps, what's actually happening here. So back into the, the library solution, uh, everything is available. Uh, let me do also the, the package solution. Um, and yes, sooner or later, we will actually have a one command, which will do both of these. But um, it's it's slightly awkward that you always need to do this uh, both. Now, um, that's actually now getting executed. Uh, so that's going to be updated in a second. And let's get that one uh, deployed. Uh, there we go, 1619. So now if I go to my uh, tenant app catalog, uh, and let's go to the solution. There's my library test uh, SPVK file. So just getting that one on the app catalog available for the web parts to actually reference and take advantage. Now, okay, uh, we want that to be available across all of the sites uh, because the web parts might be anywhere in a tenant. So again, slightly debatable. Technically, you can do uh, a site collection app catalog uh, for library as well. Now, what about the web part? So we're consuming that library uh, in the web part sites. And this wasn't this one was the library part. So let me actually jump to a web part, which is actually consuming that library. So in this library. Yeah, I think uh, Brad, Brad is. And hello. Apache, can you mute yourself? Thank you. Thank you. Now, um, so what's going to happen next is that we link, we need to do npm link, and all of this is going to be documented uh, in this solution, in the solution folder. And after that, uh, we are just able uh, to reference uh, the library uh, in our uh, code. So basically what we need to do, we don't need to update any configs. We don't need to update anything more than say, import as my awesome library. 
and the npm linking, uh, the name which we use for npm linking. And in this case, uh, I'm just creating an instance of that library. Again, how do you implement the library? What does the library do? That's up to you. That's just a, a, a simple uh, usage scenario. It's my instance, and I'm actually adding that name property inside of this uh, uh, rendering of the, of the HTML. Now, what's really cool about this one, the only thing what we need to do in this web part is the npm linking for development time and then uh, we need to make sure that we have a dependency uh, included in here so let me actually do that for the library itself so in this case uh, our library is library test beta no beta 001 and how did I do that if I go here to the package JSON I can actually see that my library name is test beta no beta 001 so basically in our dependencies of the web part, I'm saying, hey, so we have a dependence on this basic setup and my custom setup, which is this one in here. Cool. And then we are basically good to go. So let me get into command to commander, get in here, uh, web part, uh, library test, do call bundle, does the ship. Da, 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 da. Russell, how does it know where to load the library from where it's deployed? It's magic. So basically, it's, what happens in runtime is that uh, the web part is saying, hey, so I have a dependency on this library. Um, SharePoint, can you help me? And SharePoint says, oh, yeah, I got that. This is for you. And voila, that's the only thing what you need to do. So it's super automatic. You don't need to do any associations or anything. And let's do the package solution. Uh, this is really, really cool stuff. And and at the time when we're waiting this to actually uh, do this, think about all of the generic code which you can put on a library. And then you're able to use the same library code, dynamically runtime, in your web parts, cross the whole tenant uh, in an efficient way. And you're able to version that centralized library completely as independently. So you're able to introduce stuff, change the stuff, and that will completely do modifications on other sites. Um, oh. Uh, what if I were doing a, a library package uh, versus a custom npm package? Well, basically, it's just a matter of a reference. To be fair, if you do a custom npm package, uh, then you need to host that in somewhere. You need to reference that uh, dynamically. Uh, you need to host that in uh, somewhere else than actually the, the app catalog. Technically, uh, and, uh, you can actually make that happen as well. Um, but the way we get the library now exposed is uh, super, super easy. So let me actually get uh, in here and let me get to the VP library test and let me get to the SharePoint and solutions folder. And there we go, library test is, is available over there. So let me get my uh, app catalog available. Uh, here we go, voila. Getting everything installed. Uh, there we go, and it's a normal web part solution. I will click check uh, checkbox and that one, bum, and we are deployment should be completed. So now if I go to communication sites, refresh, and uh, let's create a new page, add a page, and let's call this uh, demo. In here we should have something related on a library and VP library test, and there is our with part, which is actually dynamically getting referenced, uh, referencing that library implementation uh, inside of the code. The only thing like that was the, the runtime dependency. And now if I do any changes on the library, I'll just drag and drop the SPP KG file to the app catalog and poof, updates are immediately available. I don't need to recompile. I don't need to do any changes on the web part side to be able to version the functionality, which is absolutely one of the key advantages of the library component comparing NPM packages because, well, theoretically, you can uh, dynamically uh, render that as well. But that's pretty impressive. So now I can do modifications on the underlying packages without impacting the web part if needed. Now, that was a really good, uh, really fast uh, demo. Uh, well, not super fast demo, but let's get back on the slides. We do have two awesome community demos coming up as well. But we wanted to actually show some new stuff, which is going to be released to preview as part of the 1.8 release. So it's going to be in preview, not uh, for GA in 1.8. Uh, the GA for library component is planned to be in the 1.9 version. And I'll, I'll have a look on if I missed any questions. Uh, while I was doing a demo. Mm -hmm.